Good morning. I'm nervous, so just putting that out there. It's a pleasure to be here, and like Pastor Rhett said, uh, y'all are a big part of our partner team, and so I wanted to start with a big thank you that is heartfelt. As I look through my notes, my wife says I tend to talk like bullet points, like I list the bullet points in my notes. So I apologize for that ahead of time. I don't mean even our thanks as just the bullet point that I have to say, but we do mean that sincerely. And it's not just something that you guys have done financially in helping us, but it's a lot of little things as well. And so I want to take this moment to thank you guys even for things like we, uh, had, we welcomed our fourth child a few months back and y'all did a huge meal train and that was a huge help primarily for me <laughs> as I took care of the rest of the family. Um, so thank you for that. And then even before that, when we uh, kind of last minute ended up coming back to the States earlier than planned, I remember I was messaging Rhett, and I said, yeah, well, there's a slight chance we might come back to the States uh, a few months sooner than we planned. And then I messaged him uh, over the week, and I said, I think we're coming back <laughs> in less than a week. So it was a quick turnaround. But y'all stepped up. The, we had toys dropped off at the house that the kids still play with today. Um, and a lot of little odds and ends. My wife, I think, started crying when she saw an Instant Pot on the <laughs> counter for her to use. And a lot of little things like that made a huge help for us to transition back. So thank you for that, too. Um, I think, is there a phone number up on that screen? Maybe, not yet? Yeah. There it is. Uh, I want to mention, if y'all are not already subscribed to our newsletter, this is the one time in church that you're allowed to pull out your phones. You're welcome to just send a text message to that number, and you can uh, send an email to that number, and we'll set you up if you're interested in finding out more information. Uh, as we are on the field, we send out occasional updates and occasional prayer requests. Um, and then a little plug for next Sunday. We will be sharing a little more in depth after church. There will be a bring your own lunch at the pavilion. We'll have some hot drinks as well provided and a time of sharing uh, a little more in-depth than we can today. It's, it's meant to be a little more informal, question and answer back and forth so you guys can have an idea as well as uh, what we're up to. And I think Marie's preparing some little international baggies with some international treats that we brought. Um, so it should be a fun time. Pray for beautiful weather like today <laughs> or better than today. But um, it's a little plug there. So I want to share two little things, two more things today. One is somewhat of a brief update slash um, introduction. I know a lot of you guys don't necessarily know who we are, what we're up to. And then I also want to share specifically a story um, following the theme that we've uh, been going along with this month. I'm sorry, I'm getting all those text messages now. Ah! <laughs> Silenced everything. <laughs> my, my ADD mind is going a thousand miles a minute, I apologize. So I want to take a moment to share a story, too, of how the Spirit is moving and God has used us in our lives. We are ordinary people, but we believe that we serve an extraordinary God. Um, so that's one of the takeaways I hope you guys would get from our, from our sharing. In 2018, Blythewood Presbyterian commissioned our family. This is our home church. Going back a little, we, I think we joined in 2011 or 2012, soon after Marie and I got married. And since then, the Lord has been putting on our hearts, I, I put a couple of different descriptors, given on our hearts, laid on our hearts, blessed us and challenged us on our hearts, the burden to reach young children with the message of hope. Um, young, young children specifically, I need to stick to my notes better, um, that are caught in the snare of the adult entertainment industry, specifically trafficking um, internationally, um, specifically um, in that exploitive, abusive type situation. Um, and this is a worldwide problem. I know there's been a lot of awareness stuff happening and we'd be excited to see some of the fruits of that too. I know we've heard that it happens in our own backyard even here in Blythewood. Um, and it has a lot of different facets, if you would, of how, how the problem takes shape. And so with that, there's a lot of different ministries that take place. Um, and I'm not gonna go into all of that today. There's stuff on the prevention and the awareness. There's stuff on the rescue. There's a whole different gamut of uh, things that happen there. There's stuff in the legal department, the legal world, with lawyers and things like that, that have a place as well. And then I, put, I drew a little heart in my notes of what really the Lord has put on our heart is on that restoration side of once these children and women are brought out of these industries, what, kind of, what type of care are they getting? 
um, and that's where Marie and I fall into in trying to provide education and family context, trauma care. Marie has a counseling background. This is something that she's been working towards for many years, and so that's a huge component, uh, definitely on our side, and especially Marie. And then on my end, too, on that rehabilitation and on that vocation side and making them competent and competing in the marketplace afterwards, too, in, in hopes of them never turning back as an option from the past that they've come from. And with that is everything centered in the message of the hope of the gospel. That is crucial to everything that we do. And that's why I say we are ordinary people. God is extraordinary. He's the one at work in all of this. Um, so when we landed in Thailand in 2018, we tried to come in as learners. Marie and I have somewhat of a missionary background with our families. You'll know, hear a little bit more about that in a second. We wanted to come in as learners of language, learners of culture, um, learners of, okay, what are these problems and what do they really look like? And then what are some of the God solutions that we can't provide but we can help facilitate? And so even in that, we didn't want to arrive with a one, two, three step and saying this is what you guys need and this is your solution. We want to be open-minded. We've already seen how God has started to work with that and slowly shifting even some of our mindset and how we can, it, it's become more of an empowering the local Thai church to address this problem. And, and so it's been neat to see how the Lord's put that together. Um, I remember... Um, in the language learning, which is still ongoing, it's not done. I've still been taking Thai lessons uh, while we've been here in the States. But I remember, I think it was about two months into us living in Thailand, and uh, another fellow missionary had introduced us to a Christian lawyer who had background specifically in this arena, and he was excited to meet us. And this missionary thought it would be a good idea that we'd introduce ourselves with a little bit of Thai that we'd already learned. And so it's... Or, or, you know, a couple of basic things there. My name's Chris, I'm American, and then, okay, translate the rest for me. And at one point in our conversation, the lawyer <laughs> looked at me and said a very, I think, wise question, which is, how long do you plan on being here, meaning here in Thailand? And to which I thought I'd reply with a very wise answer, twisted and I don't know, some kind of sarcasm that wouldn't translate. I said, Pom yak yuni tung pen kon yai. <laughs> which translated to, not what I thought it would. <laughs> it said, I said, I want to live here till I become a grandma. <laughs> That's, we were able to correct that, but uh, that was the first of many, many, many mistakes. So for some of y'all who don't know me, I grew up in Italy as a missionary kid, and I grew up speaking Italian. It was kind of second nature. I never studied it. And so my siblings and I, we used to give my parents the hardest time as they had to learn Italian through the books. And when I say we used to, like even last month when we were together for Christmas, we were still giving them a hard time when they made language mistakes. And um, we started sending Lincoln to, Italian, uh, to Thai preschool about a year in. And one day I went to pick him up after school and asked, I think, all the usual father questions. How was school today? Good. What did you learn in school today? And he says, I learned how to count from one to 10 in Chinese. <laughs> and I think I looked at Maria, I said, oh, I had no idea you were learning Chinese. <laughs> and just for those of you who are geographically challenged like myself, in Thailand, Thai is the national language, not Chinese. <laughs> so he's learning Thai and, and some Chinese. And, and, and sometimes we're trying to you know, bring the language into our home. So one night we're sitting at the dining table and I said, ma, ma, which means, to come, come here, and Lincoln corrects me. And you need to know, ma has many different meanings. So I said ma, which means come here, but ma can also mean a uh, dog, or ma can mean also horse. And so Lincoln corrects me. I said, what do you mean? That's what I said. He says, no, you said ma. I said, what does that mean? He means that means horse in Chinese. So <laughs> I'm done correcting my parents. <laughs> Uh, after 30 years, um, and if they're Italian, because that, there's a prayer request right there for us. The language is ongoing. Uh, it's a challenge and an adventure. And, and so kind of shifting gears to a story, when I was trying to reflect on when Pastor Rhett challenged us to have conversations and phone calls with uh, members of our parishes about uh, spiritual encounters that we've had, um, and language has been one of those. I want to share a specific story that, where we've seen that at play. 
And so the story is kind of twofold. One is the story itself, but also um, how God was able to use my wife and I in, in a very unique way with language. And so it starts out with, we found out that a dear friend of ours who has been helping us with language a lot, uh, and, and we've been finding out these different updates from her every couple of weeks that her daughter had entered into this pageant contest thing with over 3,000 girls and uh, five school friends after school, they went and did this thing, and that she was the only one of her friends that had made it through the narrowing down. And every couple of weeks it got narrowed down to 1,000, and then we found out she got narrowed down to 100, and then we found out that it was narrowed down one more time, and she made the final 25 selection that was gonna uh, stay through this program. And just to give you some context, we had no clue what this pageant was. We had no context for ourselves. And so it happened on a Monday morning, I was gone and this lady came to our house and she was super excited. This would be, I was thinking last night as I was reviewing these, it would be kind of like the equivalent of winning a lottery to a Thai person, th this type of occasion that uh, th this daughter was uh, gonna have the opportunity to be a part of. And she's super excited and she's telling Marie about it and I come home uh, later that day and Marie tells me she's not feeling well. She says, Chris, I don't know what this is, but there's something not right. Excuse me. So we asked more questions and we did some research that afternoon. And come to find out that this contest wasn't really all that it promised to be. If I told you how much they would have brought home and made initially, we would have laughed and snuffed. But this girl was 15, year old, 15 years old, which is working age in Thailand quite commonly. And in some ways almost considered an adult, and this was a, a significant opportunity for her. And so we started to pray about ways, how can we, how can we, I don't want to say change the situation, but how can the Lord use us in this place? And the next morning I was sitting at our table in, in, in our dining area, eating my Lucky Charms. Just kidding, they don't have Lucky Charms in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, this lady came over again, and she did something that she never did before then, and she came straight to the table and sat down with me, which I don't know, it's not inappropriate, but it's not necessarily something that she would feel comfortable doing. And she started talking to me about the situation and rejoined, and this is one of the beginning parts where we were seeing, I think the Holy Spirit really act in, in our family in the, in the story, where you know our kids interrupt us every five seconds when we're trying to have a serious conversation, and for, I think, over an hour, hour and a half, we had this bubble of a serious conversation with no interruptions. And we don't know what to say in English to these type of situations sometimes. And God was giving us not just wisdom and, and ways to share with this lady, but we were doing it in Thai, which was quite amazing. I think when it ended, I looked at Maria, I said, I never had a conversation that long in Thai. Um, and you could tell the, the, the this, dear friend of ours was quite challenged. And later on that day, she said, I'm coming back tonight at seven o'clock and I'm bringing my daughter. I want you guys to talk to her. And, and this lady is a believer and, and so is her daughter. So it's a very unique situation that we were able to shed light into. Um, folks, don't let ministry be put in a box because this is something that we felt called to go to Thailand to do. Um, this happened on a night where Marie leads a, a team, which is a fancy word of saying to her and another lady down in one of the red light districts in our town where they prayer walk about a quarter mile. And over time, that's turned into even developing some relationships with some of these women before they uh, get into the busier hours of the evening. And um, so we, we never expected that to kind of hit so close to home in our home. And uh, so we made some arrangements for our kids to be cared for that evening. And this lady came over with her daughter and we had another moment totally God led where I think it was over two hours that we just were able to sit and share our hearts in Thai with our broken and limited Thai and and have a real heart to heart conversation and I got this bright idea at the end of the conversation to, have to say a prayer I don't know why I said I'll, I'll pray in Thai which is almost a language of its own and and even just that God used that that was my first time praying in Thai that's if you know me I wasn't really comfortable, but God used that as well. It wasn't any amazing prayer that I said or did. Um, 
So I wanted to take a moment and focus on that because when Rhett was challenging, with the, challenging us to reflect on the spiritual moments in our life, folks, that was the same time when my son has corrected me on how to say the word dog <laughs> or to come here. And I would love to say that the next day we retained all that Thai speaking ability and, and we've that definitely made a lot of strides since then. But um, those those hours of being able to open up with that with those two women were very much a God led and God spearheaded thing, not not us. Um, we serve a God that's extraordinary. It wasn't us. And if you're wondering what happened to the girl, you're gonna have to come next Sunday. <laughs> Just kidding. No, no, no. I wouldn't do that to you. I would not. Pastor Rhett told me to leave on a cliffhanger. Part one, part two. Um, we were blessed the next, that Wednesday morning. I, I did want to say a quick plug in. We found out that morning of this whole story, we were able to send out a newsletter. So thanks again to, for those of you with the 12 hour difference. It was just morning time when we were meeting with this girl. And uh, a lot of y'all were praying for us. Thanks again. Um, that next Wednesday morning, the lady came over and said, when we got home, we sat and cried in the car for another 30 minutes as they trusted the Lord and let this dream, or what appeared to be an amazing dream. And if we gave you more, deals, more details on this deal, you would realize it's not a dream at all. But um, the girl decided to turn it down. So continue to pray for them that the Lord will bless a different path, the path that he selected for her. But thank you guys for letting us share, and thank you guys for... The family that you guys have provided for us. Thank you, Chris, for sharing. I, I'd like to invite the whole family to come up, as well as John and Dawn, if y'all would come up. So Marie's parents are here, and um, love for the family to come up just for us to have a time of prayer over them. I appreciate you sharing. And I do want to also encourage, um, if you're able, to join us next week uh, to bring a picnic lunch. There'll be more about that in the BBC News and just be able to hear more stories. So if the, maybe the family could stand in the front and um, the parents in the back where you can speak into the mic. I'd love for us to be able to, to pray for y'all. Our Father, we can't thank you enough. You who called these two from before the creation of the world to be your glory bearers in a place of darkness. Mm -hmm. You know that we gave Marie to you before she was ever born. And we thank you that you answered our prayer to bring along the right one into her life in your perfect timing and to see them stand here now as your glory bearers, desiring you to be known in these places of such incredible need. Thank you, Father, that this is your plan and your way Thank you that you have taken Chris and Marie and Lincoln and Elena and Oakley and Alexander and that you have wrapped your strong arms around them. And we pray that they would see you accurately for who you are, that they would trust you even as we have sung about this morning, even when the night grows dark, that you would allow there to be many more rescues, Lord, because that's what that story was about. You saved that girl from a terrible future. And we ask that, Father, as they move into, into the streets of Chiang Mai and in other places where you open up doors, we cry out to you to give them what they need in the moment each and every day, and may they passionately fall deeper in love with you. We pray for, for our beloved grandchildren that you would show them the full extent of your love, that you would enable them to fall deeper in love with you as well, and that you would allow this family to stand strong. We pray that out of your glorious riches, you would strengthen them with power through your spirit in their inner being so that Christ may dwell in their hearts through faith. And we pray that they being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is your incredible eternal love and to know this love that surpasses knowledge so they may be filled to the measure of the fullness of who you are as the triune God. And I pray that their vision would be realized, the vision that comes from your heart through them, and that many, many lives would be transformed in the days to come. Mm -hmm. Father, as they go out, may we have the grace 
to release them well. All that matters is your glory. So show them your glory. And in closing, thank you for this church that has stood with them. Father, may the prayers continue. May the love change this world here in Blythewood and in Thailand for the sake of your name. Mm. It's in that name that we ask it. Yes, Lord, we do. Thank you for this ordinary family. Thank you for being an extraordinary God that does extraordinary things through ordinary people. Thank you, Lord, for their hearts, and thank you, Lord, for the way that you had your hand in their hearts. And we just pray, Lord, as they continue on taking steps of obedience and faith that they believe that you have called them to, that you would protect, that you would provide. And Lord, that they would be aware of your presence wherever they are and whatever circumstances that they're in, and even when they are en route. Lord, that they would experience the joy of your salvation and that that would so immolate and be reflected in their lives that you would bring others to be drawn to that spring of living water where life can be found. So we thank you, Lord, for this family. We thank you, Lord, for the extended family. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you've done, what you're doing, and what you will do. And uh, just pray that um, in this season of life, again, that we would be aware of the work that you're doing, the advancement of the gospel, and the building of your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all.